Hello and welcome to the Celtic Way Morning Briefing for Wednesday, June the 1st. With me again today is Alison McConnell. How are we today, Alison? Very well, thank you, Sean. Uh, good stuff. Before we get to our first topic, uh, we are, of course, as you can see on the screen just now, uh, sponsored by the One Football app. The link is in the description and it's uh, basically a one-stop shop for football news, fixture stats, scores, etc, etc. It's on Apple, Android stores as well. It's been completely free. And speaking of free stuff, running along the bottom there is our special offer, which is extended into this month as well. So that's 30 days of full access to the website for absolutely nothing. If you go to www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe, it's pretty easy to sign up. And I'll even put the link in the comments now as well. Uh, okay, Alison, given I've, I've got the housekeeping out of the way, I uh, just mock up that banner there. Um, Scotland, uh, Alison, they kick off a busy international period for Celtic players tonight. Uh, four involved uh, in what could end up being a five-game stretch if they beat Ukraine tonight. I was just saying that to you before, before we come on there. It will be Wales and Cardiff on Saturday if they beat Ukraine tonight. Um, followed by Armenia on June the 8th, Ireland on the 11th, and then away to the Armenians on the 14th. Now, you'd imagine Callum McGregor, similar to what we've been talking about there in the last few days, will play the vast majority of minutes in those games. Um, but what about the rest? Do you see Greg Taylor, David Turnbull or Anthony Ralston getting much game time? In a word, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think... I think they may get some game time, but I don't think they'll be starters. I don't think any of the trio that you mentioned there will start. Um, I think uh, I think there's probably a case maybe for for Ralston and, and and maybe one of the games, one of the the Nations League games. But mm. uh, yeah, I, I think Steve. I think you could pick tonight's squad certainly. Uh, just knowing Steve Clark, knowing how Scotland line up, knowing how they play, and I think Callum McGregor will clock up significant minutes yeah. again over the next the next fortnight. Given Nathan Patterson is potentially, I think, I don't know if it's actually been fully confirmed, but certainly set to miss this game tonight, is it then a straight choice between Ralston and Stephen O'Donnell for you? Or, I mean, Aaron Hickey's floating about in there too now, having featured it at right wing back for Bologna recently. Yeah, I think Hickey might just be ahead of Ralston in the, the pecking order there. Um, I, I, I don't think Anthony Ralston could do much more in terms of his own season. I think um, he offered a fairly compelling account of his abilities this time a year ago. I don't think anyone connected with Celtic would have expected the impact he made on this campaign. But again, you would probably have to say that if everyone is fully fit at Celtic, he's not a shoe in to start games. Hmm. Um, I think Stephen O'Donnell has his shirt for Steve Clark, whatever your thoughts on it, I think that's just, I think that tends to be who his favoured starting right back is. I don't see it deviating this evening. Uh, it may change given the, the volume of games it could be played over the next couple of days, but um, yeah, I think Stephen O'Donnell will start tonight, certainly. I think he'll go for O'Donnell, yeah. Um, to be honest, the real problem for Scotland tonight for me isn't so much about whether to play a current Celtic fullback, fullback but not being able to play a former one in Kieran Tierney. I think that's the biggest issue. I think that, that the inclusion of Tierney at left centre-back to, is, is basically the reason that they play that system to begin with, but it also gives you a, an option that no other player in that squad can currently can currently replicate. I think that's probably the, the real position uh, that, that, that will be an issue tonight and going forward. But, I mean, David, David Bradley's comment there about, about Ralston, just a, a boy looking for his moment. Uh, he obviously did get the cap, um, the Denmark game on it, the left wing back, funnily enough. Um, Frank Brennan came in saying the only question is, is there actually a better Scottish right fullback uh, than than Tony Ralston? He thinks no and definitely should start tonight. We suppose disagree, Alison, not necessarily with, is there a better Scottish right fullback? Because right now he is the form fullback, but definitely start tonight. I think both of us agree it's probably Stephen O'Donnell, isn't it? I think it will be Stephen O'Donnell. I think regardless of what your own opinion is on it, I think the only person whose opinion really counts is Steve Clark's. Mm -hmm. And I think I think he'll go with the tried and tested. I think he'll go with players that have come through the campaign with him. Um, I think Anthony Ralston will have designs on making that position his own for Scotland. I think it will be maybe the next ambition for him in terms of having something to work towards and, and building on where he is with Celtic. 
But given where Scotland are just now, just potentially two games away from a World Cup place, I think Steve Clark will stick with the players that have got them into this position. In any case, I'd imagine, and, and I'm kind of seeing it in a couple of the comments, that for many Celtic fans, it's simply a case of like the, the fewest minutes played, the better for all four players. Um, but in terms of them themselves, you want to see them get that international recognition, not just in the squad, but on the pitch, yeah? Yeah, and I think if you speak to players at all, it's very apparent just what that means to them in terms of career progression, just in terms, I think international football is is maybe the equivalent of playing European football. I think you can have, you have exposure to a higher level. I think it can just open your eyes a bit in that sense. Uh, I think it's also a significant accolade to have. I think every player would want to go and play for their country. And I think all the more so when you look at where Scotland are and, and poised, just, it, it's tantalisingly close just um, to go to a World Cup. And I would imagine for, for any player, that must be just one of the real bucket lists that you would have as a player. To go and compete and be part of a World Cup, I think would be a phenomenal experience, I think, uh, and I think everyone would be desperate to play a part. And I think if you're in or around or on the fringes of the national team at the minute, it would feel like a very exciting squad to be part of. And just to get you in the mood for this game tonight, I've got a bad feeling about this game, Patrick says. Um, hopefully not. Hopefully not. Hopefully they are going to Cardiff on Saturday, it would be, wouldn't it? Um, so the other comment coming through here, David Bradley, Ralston would bring a freshness in that position. Now, I agree. I actually do think there's there's something to be said for for including them. I don't think Clark will do it. That's that's the basis of my point. Not that Ralston doesn't deserve to get the nod, just that I don't think he will. And it was a similar feeling that I had at the last international break when he had been playing for Celtic. He's been playing all season for Celtic. I realise. I get what you're saying. He's when when everyone's fit, he's not going to be the one that gets. Yeah, Juranovic. Juranovic will get it, but nonetheless, he has been playing. Um, some would argue I may, may have made the point that in the last squad that you don't actually have to be playing to get selected in a Steve Clark Scotland squad. But nonetheless, Ralston has been playing. And I do agree with, with David Bradley that he would bring a freshness. All I'm saying is I don't expect him to actually get the nod. That's all. And I think that, that's exactly what you're saying as well, Alison. That is exactly what I'm saying. I, I think um, I think there is an argument for Ralston. I would absolutely accept it. Um, but I think O'Donnell has... has proven it, if you like. I think O'Donnell at times has actually been quite unfairly criticised for his mm. performances at Scotland level. I think even just that game down at Wembley against England in the Euros last season, mm. I thought he played pretty well. Um, I think he, he's been a bit of a, a whipping boy at times in that role for Scotland. But I think Steve Clark likes him. I think he trusts him. Mm. And I think, that, I think that's why he starts. And I think he's been relied upon at times over the course of this campaign. And I wouldn't see any deviation at all. For me, it was... Um, I, I agree with you. I think O'Donnell has been an unfair whipping boy. But um, despite that, I, could all, I can also appreciate the, the, kind of the analysis of he isn't quite at the level. But nonetheless, I don't think he's been anywhere near as bad as what people like to make out either. Yeah, um, I, would, I, would I think he has the shirt. I think he probably deservedly still has the shirt because he's not really done that much long, wrong to lose it. For me, when I wrote the piece at the last international break saying Ralston probably should have been in the Scotland squad, but I wasn't surprised that he wasn't in it. It wasn't on the basis that, that people assumed that oh, O'Donnell should be should be the one that dropped out. I've always thought it was Nathan Patterson that didn't really deserve to be in it, um, just because of complete lack of game time. Now, he was obviously in the squad and Ralston's in the squad this time as well. You've got also Hickey and you've got Adon. You've got potential four, four right-backs that, that, that are in it now. Um, so I don't, I, I don't want it to be to be kind of misunderstood that it's it, it's a Donald's, um, it's me that that's saying like a Donald shouldn't be in the squad at all that kind of thing in favour of Ralston. I, it was never really that for me. It was more about if you're playing and you're playing well consistently, then be in the squad or you've already got the jersey. And I thought O'Donnell had the jer the jersey and Ralston was playing well consistently. So it was actually Nathan Patterson for me that that, that shouldn't have been in the squad. And I realise that's quite controversial for in a lot of places, but. That, that was the way that I felt about it. Yeah, I would absolutely take that point too. I think um, the one caveat I would say is that I think Nathan Patterson has done well when you've seen him at international level. I think he has performed well, which would, would 
would create an argument for his inclusion, but I, mm. I do think it's important to be playing games. I do think it's important to be playing week in, week out in terms of getting into the national squad. And I think Ralston deserves his inclusion just now. And and I think it's the next step for him. I think it, it's the next plausible career goal for him is to go and fight for that for that position. I think there's significant competition for it. I think when you look at the, the names that you've just mentioned, the young yeah. players that are coming through, you've got Nathan Patterson, yeah. you've got Hickey, all I think that you could make an argument on the merits of what they offer. So I think there is serious competition for it, which is what you want. I think that's what you need to go on and have a successful na- international team for. But I think at the minute, uh, looking towards tonight's game against Ukraine and then I think Sunday's game uh, against potentially against Wales if Scotland come through tonight I think what you'll see is tried and tested players, players who have been over the course of Scotland over these last 18 months or so uh, and I think players that Steve Clark has, has entrusted to, to take Scotland within touching distance of a World Cup You've also, as Rab's pointing out here, you've also got <coughs> Calvin Ramsey, another right back highly rated, not in the squad just now obviously but there's a production line there. It is going to be hard for any of them to actually nail it down as their own, I think. It'll be an achievement, whoever whoever, whoever actually does do it. I really um, like Roy Ramsey, actually. Yeah. A bit of him. This season, I really like him. He actually, I think the way he plays is quite reminiscent of Tierney, obviously on the, the mm. opposite the opposite side. But I've really liked, I've maybe seen him six or seven times this season. I've really liked what I've seen. And he's shown up in a very poor Aberdeen team this season. Mm-hmm. Uh, on top of the Scots, you've also got the likes of Dyson Maeda and Kyogo for a hash away with Japan, which is for a couple of friendlies and then potentially the, the, the Kirin Cup, if you remember that tournament. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got Josip Juranovic, he'll likely be involved in most of Croatia's four nation, Nations League games. Uh, your Josh Yakimakis could see game time for Greece too. You've got Karol Starfelt back in the Sweden, fo- uh, Sweden fold. Uh, Leila Labadas in the senior Israeli side. Is it basically the same rules apply for them as the Scots, Alice, and get their international recognition, but ultimately don't get injured for pre-season starting? Absolutely. I think, listen, I think it's it's a balancing act all the time when players are away in international duty. I think from the perspective of, of a manager, I think you want them to go. I think you want them to have that exposure to international football. I think also it's probably good to have a break um, from, from club football, a break from your normal routine. I think it could probably in some ways work for you in terms of freshening you up just to a bit of time with your um you know with your fellow countrymen and, and going home and maybe an opportunity to see family and see friends. I think mm-hmm. there's there's maybe possibilities. There's there's all sorts of benefits that come with it. And I think managers would appreciate it. And I think too, from a player's perspective, it's a very significant accolade to be invited in to represent your country. I think everyone would want to be there. Um but the the only qualification is that you are definitely there is a concern about players going and coming back injured and I think earlier in the season Furuhashi went away with Japan and, and picked up a knock and yeah. it, it seemed to stall him when he came back it took a while then to get fit I think it, for all managers I think that's the price that you pay but ultimately I think you would always want your, your players to be in that position of going and representing their country and I think it's just a factor if you play at a top club that's what you get. And I think it's the, the amount of players that you have in international duty is probably reflective of the quality that you have within your squad. Well, there's 13, I, I, technically 13. I didn't deliberately didn't mention uh, Cameron Carter-Vickers, who's obviously in the USA fold again uh, among the Celtic contingent away, largely for fear of jinxing things, <laughs> I suppose. But he's away as well. And not forgetting that there's youth internationals as well. So Stephen Welsh is away with Scotland under-21s and Matt O'Reilly with Denmark under-21s. Um, I mean, this all ties into, and this is maybe a, a quite a negative point to go on after listing all that, but because it is a, it is an honour. But this all ties into the kind of thing we've discussed in the past couple of days in terms of workload and that inability for a lot of players to get a proper break. Now, after these, <clears throat> pardon me, after these international fixtures are done, it's not actually that long before it's pre-season training. It's Austria for Celtic and friendlies. That thief pro four week block that, that we spoke about, or block of rest, it just seems more unlikely every passing season to me when you actually look at it and add it all up. Yeah, I think I would agree. I think what you're moving towards really is a 12 month cycle of football. There, there's mm. very little downtime in it. I think it's why 
sports science is so important. I think it has such a significant role to play. I think more than at any other time in, in football's history, players need to be athletes to cope with the physical and demands that come with a very elongated campaign now. I think what you see is there is very genuine breaks within the season and very few at the end of the season when you when you look at the calendar and you look at the blocks of games. I think it's important to try and factor in recovery time. I think it's important to try and take breaks where and when they can. And you would like to think that the players who have all been in international duty will be given an extended mm-hmm. break before going back. And I think this is the one season where Celtic could afford to do that because of obviously they don't have the the Champions League qualifiers coming very, very early on. I think sometimes you've seen those games coming, you know, almost 10th, 11th of July, first competitive game in the season, underpins the tone of the campaign, I think. Um, I think the fact that they don't have them might allow them to offer an extra week or, or so or an extra 10 days. I think it's important if that opportunity is there that the players are given it. Retro Celtic echoing that there. It's great that they don't have European qualifiers because it'll be a nightmare due to the World Cup. That's something you've mentioned a few times. You actually wrote a column on it for the website as well. The the sheer intensity once it starts next year, it's, it is all the way through until the World Cup and then back on the, the horse again after it. Um, and you've got to remember, we're talking about an international break here, well, an international uh, fixture list. That's going to be the case at the World Cup. It's not like it's a break. Most of the Celtic squad will hopefully for them, hopefully, be going to the World Cup. Um, even if they're not, they're probably a bit of national friendlies for warm up for the teams that are going and stuff. You'll probably find we're in this position again where it's maybe even more than 13 players that are, that are breaking for the World Cup or going on international duty again. So it's not even a break from that intense fixture list, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I think it's there's no respite this season. I think it's an incredibly intense run until you get to the World Cup and then even the latter half of the season is fairly congested. I think it will be important to have depth within the squad, important mm. to have players who um, who can step in because I think when there's an over-reliance on certain players, I think you absolutely run the risk of injuries and soft tissue injuries, especially when you factor in how Celtic play, how they train, the, the, the intensity of, of all that Output almost, I think it does take a toll. I think you have to try and be as sensible as possible in managing that and managing the workload. Uh, and I think also you have to be really hammering home. And I think the bulk of players do get this, but I think just um, appreciating the need for recovery, the need for mm-hmm. rest in between games. And I think most modern players now come through with that. They're, they're brought up with it. I think they all know the benefits of, of rest and recovery and, and taking the advice of the sports science department. I mean, you hear that in interviews from Celtic players throughout the season as well. Greg Taylor in particular mentioned it a few times that part of the, not not the problem, but part of the difficulty in terms of actually getting time on the training part, on the training pitch with Posta Coglu just after they arrived was the, the sheer intensity of the fixture list. He mentioned a few times that it's mostly rest days and video analysis rather than actual training properly intense training because you've just not got that much time. You've got a game basically three times a week when you think about it in the seven-day span. Um, but Rab Ra- McCune's making a good point here. Actually, I kind of forgot. Whoever doesn't go to the World Cup will be going with Celtic to the Sydney Super Cup as well. So you've got a bit of, you've got a travel, a travel in the a travel to um to Australia for a couple of friendlies there as well. So it really is that there, there is no rest. There won't be any rest and, and that's I suppose that's the way Posta Coglu says he likes it. But nonetheless it's still something to consider. I think it's a modern game. I just think um, I think all, well, it, it is a move towards almost a 12-month season. I think what you'll see increasingly is just very, very little downtime. And, and I think that, I think it can be a headache. I think, um, I think it can be incredibly intense to be in the midst of it, which is why I think when there is an opportunity for rest, it's incredibly important to take it. Uh, just before we go, I know it's not a Celtic game, but you got a, a score prediction for the Scotland game tonight, so you said there could be four Celtic players involved at some stage. Do you think they'll qualify, put it that way? Do you think they'll go to the they'll, they'll set up a tie against Wales in, in, at the weekend? Honestly, I don't know. Uh, my mm. heart 
you know, my heart would like to say yes, my head, I'm not so sure. I think it's a difficult game for all the politics that are going on mm-hmm. round about it. I think, um, yeah, I think it's a really difficult one to call. I'd love to see Scotland go through. I'd love to, to see them go on Sunday to Cardiff and, and beat Wales and qualify. I think um, to see Scotland at a World Cup, I, I just think it would be incredible. I think it's, it's you know, 1998 since the last mm-hmm. time it happened. I think it, I think it galvanises the country. I think it creates a whole fresh interest in the game. I'm not sure. I'm really not <laughs> okay. sure. I, I, I think, comments. Um, yeah. Robert Gibson right in 1 0 to Ukraine. Uh, but Rab McCune, Scotland to win 2 0. Um, I think it'll be, I think it'll be a really good game. For us to go yeah, I think. Was it depends who's writing the script, David? Graham Soonis, if he's writing it, he'd, he'd quite happily uh, put Ukraine through by the sounds of it. But um, I think there's a bizarre nah. narrative that's built yeah. up around the game with that. Like, um, I, I actually think the biggest respect you can give Ukraine is that you want to beat them, you want to, you don't want to patronize them almost. It's a, you know, it's a it's a game of football. It's a competition. It's a competitive sport, and I think um, you know I, I, it doesn't uh, detract from the sympathies that you have around what they've gone through and what their country is enduring at the minute. To still say that you want to go and and, mm-hmm. and beat them, I think both can be both can coexist. Um, but I think it is a difficult game, even even without everything that's gone on. I think it's a very difficult game. I mean, they've they've got a strong squad when you look at where their players play mm-hmm. and yeah. um, I think it'll be a really difficult night for Scotland, I'll say Scotland 2-1 I, uh, I'm, I'm with you, I think that it was it was a nonsense to be honest to even be discussing the type of thing that, that um, Sunis and, and others were saying uh, I, and I also think it's nonsense to think he would have said anything like that if he was a manager or a player So <laughs> uh, I, I I'll, I'll, I'll allow myself to indulge, I'll go 1-0 Scotland so, um, aye, Wales and Wales at the weekend. Is it Sunday, did you say? I thought it was Saturday. Sunday. Game was Sunday. Sunday. Sunday in Cardiff. All right. Well, on that note, uh, before we head off, as I say, remember, you can pick up, I'll put the, the link in the description again, you can pick up 30 days of full access to the website for free just now. So that'll cover you for the whole of June uh, as we gear up for pre-season. There'll be transfer scouting, continued analysis of the Celtic squad as it stands, uh, what it could be and more big interviews and features and all of that as well. So I'll put the link in the comments. But again, for today, thanks a lot for your comments, guys. Uh, much appreciated as always, and thanks for your contribution, Alison. Uh, we'll catch you again tomorrow. Pleasure. Thank you.